Do large language models use tools, like a calculator? Do they have any capabilities of reasoning? And what is the massive amount of compute power that you need to train one of these, and the fact that companies like OpenAI and others are not releasing the weights. They're making you access these through APIs. What do these mean to the ongoing research and nature of these large language models? I saw these three topics come up in a GTC roundtable session that I attended today that was great, just discussing the large language models with both industry and academic experts. I highly suggest you watch the original video that I'm linking to in the description that I am just giving my reactions of, but let's get right into it. First of all, tools. One of the things that makes human beings great is we are able to use tools. First of all, the large language models have no access to tools. If you ask a large language model to take the square root of 3,982, it is going to actually use its neural network to do that. It is going to do this sort of on a combination of pattern matching and first principles. To me, that's fascinating. I would like to see at a very tactical level how ChatGPT is actually performing some of these arithmetic operations that it needs to do. It's not just calling out to a calculator. And I think that'll be something that makes it very efficient in the future when it does get the ability to use a calculator, to hit a website, get very current information, run the Python code that it just generated through, see if there's an error, and make that correction without me copying and pasting and say, oh, it, it reduced this error. Right now, it's the brainiac genius that just writes code from scratch and gives it to you. It doesn't check to see if it works. I've also seen some discussion of, does ChatGPT make AutoML obsolete now? I don't think so at all. AutoML, if you look at what AutoML does, first of all, it rarely generates the actual code for you. It gives you some sort of a black box model that you call into yourself. But secondarily, it tunes the hyperparameters. It does all these data intensive things where it's doing optimizations on the hyperparameters, running multiple models, seeing which of those do good, then ensembling them together. None of this is anything that ChatGPT has the capability to do. I think AutoML is certainly one of the tools that will make, bring this really to the next level. Reasoning. That was another point that the individuals there talked about. Is it more of just a philosophical concern? What, I mean, what even is reasoning? Does it have it? Does it not? The general consensus was no, it, it does not, that most of what ChatGPT is exhibiting as reasoning is just seeing so many paths and lines of reasoning in the text that it analyzed so that it appears that it's reasoning and it can synthesize and bring multiple branches together to give you some notion that it is reasoning. It certainly can make some fairly smart uh, inferences. One thing that one of the people in the presentation suggested, and I tried it out myself, was when ChatGPT has to deal with areas where just there, there's nothing there, like she suggested, what would you do if there's a banana in the road and you're driving? Well, that's pretty unusual. I did ask it, and it did suggest slowing down to or, and, and maneuvering around the banana rather than just smashing it into the pavement like, like my human reasoning would probably tell me to do. There's also a lot of, you know, the classic cartoon characters that slip on a banana. I'm, I'm thinking she chose banana specifically to, uh, that it might draw some comparison of a slip hazard. They wrapped it up kind of with the openness of these models. So, as things move a bit more from academia into industry, you don't have companies just releasing all the parameters to these models anymore. You can't just go download 
GPT-3 or GPT-4, the structures of them are defined so that there are re-implementations of them in open source. But we're getting to the point where you have to train these models on such intense, like 1,024 GPU grids of machines with just like a million dollars to train through one run of a large language model that puts it out of the reach of a lot of academic researchers. You have industry basically just throwing compute, throwing money at it. The, the openness that was there in the earlier days of neural networks and deep learning research might, might be going away. Anyway, very interesting presentation, and I definitely encourage you to take a look. The link is in the description. And I also have a giveaway going on. I'm giving away a 4080 that NVIDIA was kind enough to give to the YouTube channel. So have a look and enjoy GTC.